Welcome back to another Sam.gov Bids Live episode number 23 today, where we walk through small business solicitations together on Sam and answer your questions along the way so that you can get started bidding and winning contracts for your small business. Today, we have five small business solicitations pulled up that we will be jumping into in just a second. But if you are new here and you don't want to miss future Sam back of bids episodes, consider subscribing to the channel and click that notification bell so that you can ask your questions live on future streams. And if you do happen to be somebody who's recently registered your business in Sam and you're looking to get started bidding, check out my website, govkidmethod.com for free and paid resources that were designed specifically for new federal contractors just like you. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at the bids that we will be going over today. Just bear with me, actually. One second. Looks like there were some changes made to uh, my system here. All right, here we go. So first, there we go. That's better. So the first bid that we're going to be going over today is actually this one. So it's for Microsoft Services Premier Support, FMCS. And uh, number two is going to be ground maintenance and snow removal. If I sound a little funny, guys, just bear with me. I'm getting over a cold and I'm still a little foggy. So uh, just bear with me if I sound a little different. Um, bid number three today is going to be janitorial services out of Miami, Florida, um, at a vet center. Number four, we have cafeteria deep cleaning at the Robert T. Matsui Federal Courthouse. Uh, then lastly, we do have a uh, Kentucky Air National Guard, um, Army National Guard, uh, second quarter lodging contract to look at as well. And I do always say, if you are new here, um, let me know in the chat what, what um, this is your first live you're catching and what state and what location are you from? Uh, it's always cool to see where we're at on the map. But also, if you are new here, um, just so you know, we don't look at any of these bids ahead of time. This way I can bring you the, the raw, unfiltered version of going through these bids instead of kind of like the polished uh, thing. This way we kind of get to go through like the new stuff and any of the challenges uh, together because that's what you're going to be going through too as you try to go out and do this for your business as well. And also, um, the way this works, since we are totally live, uh, I go through one bid and then we answer questions and say hello in the chat. And then we just ping pong back and forth um, for about an hour. So bid, and then I'll answer questions in the chat. So if you have questions, feel free to post those. And then once we kind of get caught up, we'll go to the next bid. And that's how it works. So look, now let's go ahead and jump into uh, the first bid we're going to be looking at today. I'll zoom in just a little bit. And this is, again, going to be for the Microsoft Services Premier Support and this is going to be due November 30th. So this is due in a week, not a lot of time at this stage. Um, this is also set aside for woman-owned small, small business specifically with the NAICS code 541519, Washington, D.C., uh, place of performance. They are saying the Federal Mediation and Conciliation Services intends to award a FFP, a firm fixed price purchase order, to procure Microsoft Services Premier Support. OK, so this is name brand. There's not going to be a whole lot of like thinking or, or guessing like they're telling you exactly what they want. And it's going to be from an authorized premier support partner. So just right off the cuff, it's likely that you're going to um, have to either be this premier support partner or you're going to have to kind of partner with somebody who is. But if that is the case, you're going to have to be making sure they're not going after this themselves. Right. Because the 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 pricing is not going to work out. You're going to be more expensive. You're not going to be able to compete. So that's going to be the, the, the challenge um, or the opportunity, depending um, for you on this one. We do have two attachments. We have a vendor quote sheet, pretty straightforward, and the solicitation document itself, which we'll go ahead and dive into and get started with. Giving us some highlights, just reflecting this is 100% 
woman owned. So again, if you, if you don't have that WOSB cert, you would not be qualified to go after that. If, um, if you don't, this is how you, you know, kind of, uh, beef up your qualifying system so that you're only investing times in bids that you are qualified to go after. They're saying all quotes should contain the following vendor quote sheet, which was that other attachment, which we will bounce over. And then they want verification of that WOSB. And then they also want verification of a Microsoft authorized reseller status. Okay. And again, if you're going to be partnering with, with somebody uh, or a company, you would be able to reflect theirs, their status in this. They just need proof because only those who have that authorized reseller status will be able to obtain this for them. So they're just needing to see this, whether it's from your company directly or a company you'll be working with. Um, they're going to need these three things reflected in this quote. And it's a very straightforward um, response. Not a lot of time. It's either going to be, you can do this or you can't. Okay. Uh, reps and certs to follow. And my guess is it's probably just going to take up the remaining pages of the document. And it is. And they're reiterating. Um, this is going to be lowest price, as we could guess, because this is more of a commodity type purchase. There's not going to be uh, things that compare to evaluate, like technical approach and past performance and all these things. The government's saying, you know what? You're probably not going to be able to mess this up. Uh, so we just want whoever has the lowest price. And that's really what we're caring about, as long as you're technically acceptable. And again, that's going to be that's going to be mirrored in having that authorized reseller certification in your in your quote sheet here okay so again this is due november 23rd 5 uh, p.m eastern daylight time and once again they're making this very simple for you letting you know what they need to see included in your quote along with that wsb status okay so we will just take a quick little peek at the vendor quote sheet and then we'll um go ahead and say hello in the chat and again if you are live if you're watching us what state are you from where are you located at in the country we want to know, and especially if this is your first time catching a live, let us know this is your first time because that's pretty cool as well. So this is that vendor quote sheet. Um, they're breaking it down to two pricing CLINs, one for unified coverage, two for proactive credits. And they're saying one for the quantity and 225 for the quantity. If you had questions about what these actually mean, you could ask contracting to further explain. Um, doesn't actually seem to be overly intuitive. Um, but we know it's going to be relating to the um, the software and the service that they're they're buying in this. All right. Um, so we've got uh, Danny from Portland, or Danny or Daniel, I think Daniel, uh, Portland, Oregon. Awesome. Blake here from your group. Awesome. Just taking in all the extra information. 100%. Blake, good to see you, my man. Blake is part of our bid team. Um, Extra shout out uh, to him. Uh, we have D. Thanks for joining. We have Wall. First time catching live Dallas, Texas. Awesome, awesome. Uh, mine was blurry too. Change setting to 1080. Guys, let me. Uh, shouldn't be blurry. Um, could be like an internet con connectivity type thing. Um, let me know if it doesn't get uh, fixed out or uh, anybody else. Um, if the screen is clear for you, let me know because it could be a local type thing um yeah but we'll keep we'll kind of keep rolling here as well all right so our second bid we're going to be looking at today is going to be for grounds maintenance and snow removal uh, removal rather <laughs> it's going to be for mick mission installation contracting command uh fort sam houston fort knox um so this is actually 8a set aside Interestingly enough, Fort Belvoir, Virginia is going to be where this is work to be performed. Um, they are referencing Amendment 4, so it looks like there's going to be a number of changes on this one, what, which might be interesting to dig into. They're saying revisions are made to technical capability, technical experiences, uh, experience for key personnel, and we'll kind of try to dig into that. Revisions have also been made for the PWS. Um, no further questions will be addressed at this point, and the proposals are due. Uh, let's see, 1 December, and I think we skipped over that, but yeah, 1 December at noon. Cool. So in terms of our documents here, uh, looks like we have solicitation, we have a map, Amendment 1, Amendment 3, another map. We have a, another map, 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 and Amendment 4. So I'm not seeing Amendment 2, it could just be a 
Yeah, okay, actually, sure it is. Yep. So, like I said, a number of amendments. We'll go ahead and I guess just get started with the first solicitation, the, the full shebang here, 104 pages. Again, let's remind ourselves what this is for. This is for grounds, maintenance, and snow removal. So they are wanting you to, again, we start out with our SF-1449 form here, and then we go into our, um, they're saying addendum for instruction to offers, proposal requirements. The offer must provide the following info. So you'd fill this little box out. And again, um, this is 8A side aside, but they're also letting us know this is the lowest price technically acceptable, which is interesting for grounds, um, maintenance and snow removal. Complete the SF-1449 blocks here. Um, fill out the pricing CLINs, which we haven't seen yet, but we'll probably be running into. Questions are due. Th this is saying by October 7th, but this has been kicked down the road so much. Um, that's probably why they're highlighting it because that's been updated in the amendments. Okay, so this is more of the, the actual like meat and potatoes. I'll zoom in a little bit more for you guys so you can see better exactly what they're wanting in your response if you were to go after this or something like this it's just good experience for you to know that you could see something like this so they're breaking this out proposal preparation instructions okay offers proposal must consist of four parts part one contract solicitation documents okay it's going to be like the sf 1449 form reps and certs stuff like that part two is going to be called a technical capability which is going to be made up of three sub factors which is just technical experience key personnel and management approach. And they're going to, my guess is, I haven't looked at this, but they're going to go on to sp spell out specifically more what would they like to see, right, in these, these sub factors. So you shouldn't be guessing like, okay, key personnel, what should I put in for this? Um, they're going to tell you, or technical experience, what do I put in for this? Or management approach, they're like, I'm not a proposal writer, or like, I'm not used to writing, or writing's not my, for my forte. It's okay. I want you to think of proposal writing more as like question answering, which anybody can answer questions, right? Um, and you can, you know, if you're using subcontractors or you're doing a legal middleman or something like that, you can get information also from whoever you're going to be working with. But then uh, aside from that, you're laying out your response based on this information that they're giving you here. So this is really like kind of like forms your table of contents. This forms your skeleton outline. And then your goal is to kind of go in and plug and chug and respond to this the, the best that you can um, with a mirror match of what they're asking for, no more, no less. Okay, we don't want to do fluff and things like that. We don't want to see 10 pages about your company's background and history just because maybe that's something you put in the commercial space or you learned it in business school. You're going to do like a, a, you know, a SWOT matrix, all this sort of stuff. Don't put that in there if they're not asking for it. It's just going to, it's going to, confuse contracting and it's going to take them longer to find the stuff that they're actually trying to find if that makes sense so they're saying times new roman or aerial font eight and a half eleven sheet of paper typical stuff that you just want to make sure that you're abiding by they are giving us page limits okay again i'm just exposing you this to this so that you know you could be coming across it for your technical capability no more than 10 pages again they don't want fluff past performance 25 pages which is really interesting because I don't know how you get your past performance to be up to 25 pages long. Um, but we'll we'll spend a minute here just to see if we can find out. So factor one, technical capability. Okay. They're they're really breaking that down into these sub factors. So for the sub factor one, technical experience, submit offers experience providing services of similar scope and size with an annual value of 4 million or greater, which is interesting because we haven't looked at the pricing or seen the pricing cleanse yet, but they're saying an annual value of 4 million or greater. And if that's what they're wanting you to be uh, relative to, it's kind of giving you an insight look to the value of, of this contract, right? And it's a little bit surprising that they would be going lowest price if the value is that high. Um, the offer shall provide no more than three citations of contracts or subcontracts dated three years from the date of receipt of proposals. Okay. Subfactor two, key personnel. Offer must demonstrate clearly and in detail how each of the key personnel proposed meet the quals experience listed in paragraph 7.2, 7.3, which we didn't really get to yet. 
Um, but in layman's terms, they're saying a PM, a program manager, an alternate PM, and two crew leaders. So that's specifically what you would be writing. I'm just pointing this out for you. Okay. The offer's proposal shall address its ability to provide the key personnel with the appropriate. So this is going to be something like, you know, like a staffing plan, right? Staffing and retention plan along with the experience of these individuals. Okay, next, they want a management approach and they're gonna tell you what they want. Just demonstrate how basically you're going to be able to address government concerns and issues with performance if those occur um, and how you're going to structure and have procedures to manage this project in accordance with the statement of work. Like pretty straightforward management approach should be able to accomplish this. Uh, price, price will not be rated. Okay, they're not rating it, but price will be evaluated for reasonableness um, for like unbalanced pricing or, or too high or too low type stuff. Um, and then fill out the pricing cleanse for that. And I'm really curious to get to those cleanse because we haven't seen that yet. Um, but past performance, part four, past performance. This part must contain past performance information regarding similar contracts. Part four must not exceed 25 pages plus five pages for each major subcontractor. Offers must submit government and or commercial contracts for the prime offer and each major subcontractor in performance or award. And that's how we are able to use subcontractors past performance. You can see that it's written in right there. Okay, I really just kind of want to, so, so now we're seeing the, the PMs and the crew leaders that they're referencing. They really kind of front loaded us all the meat and potatoes on this thing. I'm um, going to spend another minute or two on this for the interest of time, and then we'll bounce back over to the chat, guys. Um, again, if you're new, what state are you from? If this is your first uh, live, let us know as well. Love seeing those. Um, they're letting us know how these will be evaluated, right? Acceptable, unacceptable, pass, fail. And now here's pricing cleanse. So they want a phase in period of, of two weeks, grounds maintenance for 11 months. They just want you to straight up price that. And then um, six months of snow and ice removal. So this is both you know seasons. This is summer and winter. This is year round if they're doing 11 months. Um, Pre-treating roads and parking lots. We've got sidewalks. We've got the variation of one to three, three to six, six to nine inches. And then we go over to what appears to be option years. And we'll see. Yeah, this is going to go for, we can see here in the delivery schedule, you can see how far this contract goes out to 2027. Okay, so it'll be a base plus four. But again, if they're saying in like, they want to see other contracts of, you know, around 4 million annual, you know, then this is looking at like a $20 million contract all in for grounds maintenance and snow plowing, which is pretty massive. And so they must be covering a lot of square footage. And I know we have a number of maps and, and things. And this is 8A, by the way. Um, so they're showing us all these different locations. And it is. It, it's just straight up different. You know, we got Fort Myers. We got McNair. We got Myers. Um, so I think you kind of get the, the point on that. And that is reflective of, of the value as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and get caught up in the chat here. Uh, TK, a simple acquisition being 250, does it refer to first year only or is it is it combined if the if base is 250 and all four option years. So it's it's like it's it's combined. So it's it's what the contract is being awarded for. It's the it's the dollars that are being obligated, okay? Um and does set aside mean that the contracting officer prefers? No, it doesn't mean that it's a preference. It means that it is who it has to go to. It can only be awarded to a company that has that set aside. Now, say they compete this out under the 8A and they don't see receive uh, qualified or enough or any you know, 8A responses, they could recompete this out and, and open it up to say total small business or open it up to full and open competition. Um, but that would require a either a recompete um, or quite honestly, you probably would only be a recompete. Like they'd have to re rebid this thing out. They're not just going to go and change it um, under the same solicitation number and notice ID typically. Um, but as it's written, it's not a preference. Like I said, it will have to go to an 8A company. 
uh, prove X. Hello, everyone. Uh, here is Abinab uh, Monier, uh, chairman of Provex in Egypt. Awesome. Uh, hopefully I pronounced that correctly. I provide the U.S. Embassy in Cairo. Awesome. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. Um, uh, you mentioned meeting with Osbu in the video. Uh, do this number one activity. What are you doing? When are you doing this marketing? During the second of the year where the budgets are more constrained in parallel? Um, if it's something that you're wanting to do, like I'm not saying to do that, uh, TK. What I'm saying is if you're wanting to do it, like this is what you could do. And that's what I covered in the video. Um, I do recommend if you're trying to do relationship building, you do it in the slower parts of the year. Um, but maybe not like the first quarter because everybody's like on vacation. So like the new year is usually kind of like a good balance, um, kind of like January up until spring because people are off vacation, um, but they're not so busy and inundated, inundated with work um, by like the, the, the crazy budget time um, of like later spring and summer. So like January, February, March, April, May, these are great times to try to do that, but it's not something that I really recommend. Um, for newbies that are getting into this, which is why I don't really talk about that at all. We focus on same neck of bids. Um, building relationships are not going to uh, win you contracts getting started out. Um, it's just not the way that the, the data and the statistics run. I mean, someone, a contracting officer is not just going to slide you a contract because they know you say, here you go. Um, you're you're going to have to still bid on that contract and win it. Okay, unless you're like 8A and you're doing soul sources and you're playing the relationship game, that's the one caveat to that soul sourcing. Um, contracts can come directly from relationships. Um, but if you're not doing the soul source game and you're doing the bidding and competing game, um, I don't even recommend that new federal contractors that haven't even won a contract yet, I don't recommend you even spend a minute on that. I would rather you invest all of your time getting your first bids out, putting numbers on the board, because that's going to be the, sh the shortest route, the, the quickest path to winning your first, second, and third contract. And then once you have that under your belt, if you want to start doing supplemental activities, and, and now you have relationships that you can try to market to, and, and you can start playing the farming game, right? Uh, we can go from hunting to farming. But um, if you're not eating yet, I think this is probably the best analogy. If you're not eating yet and you're starving, you have no money, um, you have no contracts. Uh, if you start out trying to farm, you're going to start. Okay, you need to get started hunting. Okay, and now once you've got some some meat, you've got some stuff coming in, and now you want to thicken those revenue streams or get multiple revenue streams of business activities, and you want to start farming while you're hunting, you can do that, right? But if if you're not eating, you don't have anything coming in, and you're just trying to wait for the crops to grow, which could take months and years, you're going to starve. You're not going to make it. So you need to get started hunting, and then you can grow into farming later on. Um, all right. We got uh, Juris uh, Venice from Rhode Island. Awesome. Wardog got me another one off of Unison. Second one for the win. Let's go, Wardog. I still haven't gotten that win button yet, man, but you are certainly encouraging me. Um, it's been, what, less than a month or maybe up you know, three weeks or something like that that I think you you won your first one. Love to hear it. And uh, congrats, congrats. You were like, you're totally um, doing great. Now, I know Unison is not necessarily uh, always big contracts or whatever, but what this is doing, War Dog, for your, your belief system and what you know is possible, uh, you're going to be able to grow into bigger contracts if that's something you're wanting to do um, at some point, or say you even wanted to go into services at some point and get out of procurement of products. You're going to have so much going for you it's just going to shorten that 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 learning curve um and just you're not going to get in your own way like some people do so that's freaking awesome and thank you for sharing um we got jim morgan from boca raton florida says hello to all and thank you for the valuable information you're so welcome jim morgan all right guys let's go ahead and get back to the um back to the bids here love the questions um hopefully we're getting you some some valuable answers here. So the next bid is janitorial services, Florida Vet Center, due December eighth. So we do have a couple of weeks on this. This is we're getting we're getting all the flavors today. Okay, so this one's SDV OSB. We already looked at a WSB, and we just got them looking at an 8A. So now we have a SDV OSB. 
And we do have some copy and paste jargon, but I'd rather go straight into the documents. We have a sign-in sheet. We have a sanitation procedure guide, um, just kind of uh, SOP type stuff. Looks like we have solicitation and, and maybe an amendment. So let's go ahead and let's get started with that. Okay, so how many pages we got here? All right, 31 pages, not too bad. This is for VA. Site visit is next week. For anything like this, I highly recommend attending the site visit, or if you're working with a sub, have the sub attend the site visit on behalf of your company. Court shall be valid for 120 days, so you are just going to have to um, make that known in your response as well that your your pricing your your quote is due uh, it's good for the four month period here you will fill out this company information we go straight into pricing cleans here which we'll see how helpful this is we we are seeing that the unit is uh, mo if, what does mo stand for guys mo stands for month if you don't know and we're also seeing the peer to performances uh, just high level, which is super helpful. This is going to kick off January of next year. So January 1, 2023, and it will go through, it looks like uh, the end of September. And then it'll pick back up in October. So for whatever reason, uh, the first the first um, base period here is going to just go for those first nine months. And then it'll pick back up. Um, let me see here. Interesting. Let's, we actually need to break this down just a little bit. They're saying it'll go from October through November and then December through January and then February through March. Interesting. I don't really see things broken down this way. And that's what the two signifies here. They're doing uh, option periods two months at a time, which takes up to a total of six option periods in addition to that base period, which is going to be those first um, nine months. Not really sure what the methodology is behind that. It seems administratively like a little bit of unnecessary work for contracting to keep um, executing on the option years and then followed by the grand total. Uh, but that's OK. It's not a bad thing. It's just interesting. And the rest of the story on that may may be unfolded at some point as to why they do it that way. They're saying this is going to be for the reception area, staff offices, restrooms, kitchen, approximately 200, uh, 2,655 square feet at the Miami Vet Center. And again, this is, of course, going to be VA. We do have statement of work that we go straight into here. Um, and, and that pricing that we looked at, it's fine. It's not, uh, it's not bad or anything. It's just interesting, I would say. It is straightforward. We do know what they're asking for us, and that is the most important thing to be able to quote accurately. Okay. Reps and certs, limitations on subcontracting, which the VA is, is huge on. Instruction to offer is submit your quote in writing, da, 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 da. fill out this information. Looks like this. Let's see. Quarter shell complete section, uh, the, the, obviously the pricing. Provide a statement that the services meet all requirements of the PWS. Okay, so they want a statement saying, yes, we have read and reviewed our in compliance and will perform duties in compliance with the statement of work. They also want you to provide two past performance references. It can be commercial, federal, city, state, local, um, like it says, or private contracts that are similar in size and scope within the last five years. So they're asking for two past performances. And they also want you to attach a certification, um, making sure that you're going to abide by limitations on subcontracting, right? Which a lot of people are not doing. They're not getting... Uh, they are doing government contracting illegally because they are not uh, abiding by this. And the reason the, the VA is cracking down on this is because uh, VOSBs and SDVOSBs, you know, service disabled companies and veteran owned companies, um, those illegal pass through schemes are, are, you know, they're trying to do the middleman thing, but they're doing it illegally. 
through illegal pastor schemes to take advantage of the veteran owned business status, right? So that's why they're wanting to see like you are in a abiding by this, which we don't see a lot of other agencies do. It's just because they're so they're tied so closely to that that particular set aside. And because that particular set aside is abused quite a bit. Um, but then they also want to see your actual uh, your status as well, your certification, your CVE. OK, so that they want to see all of that with your response on this. And then the valuation looks like lastly here, they are saying clearly demonstrate the quarter's understanding. We know this. They want you to describe in detail the activities and the measurable outcomes required to implement. So you would create some sort of technical approach as to how your company um, or your teaming approach with a subcontractor, if if you are going to be going that route and that sub's going to have to also be veteran owned business, right? Because that's how limitations on subcontracting works. Um, unless this is going to be underneath the simplified acquisition, uh, which we're, un we're unsure of at this point. But they're looking at your TEP, your total evaluated price, your past performance. Again, site visits are in a week. So not a bad one. If that is something you're in the game for, uh, there actually is time to go after that. Um, yeah, good question for the total small business cert. Uh, it, it's not a cert. It's something that you automatically get as long as your business is a small business in accordance with um, NAICS code size standards, which if you were to go to like Google and type in like SBA NAICS, it'll pull up the 50 page thing with uh, the, the NAICS codes in it. And it'll show you the code, the description and the uh, size standard for each of those. So it's a three year trailing average as long as your company does not exceed. Uh, you know, however many of millions, right, typically for the next codes that you're going after, then your business will still consider to be um, a total small business automatically. So that's really the only thing that you have to make sure that you're doing. Um, I've noticed after December, the solicitations drop off like a cliff. Is it because the fourth quarter? Um, well, the fourth quarter was over the summer. We're in Q1. Um, that's actually not my experience that after December, they drop off. Um, my experience is that they've already dropped off and that they start to pick up a little bit um, in January after December uh, because we are now into the second quarter. Um, so that's kind of how the, the fiscal year and the seasonality typically works. But I will say, depending on what kind of contracts you're looking at, seasonality is a thing and certain contracts could be purchased more. You know, like, for example, we see a lot of ground maintenance and snow plowing um, in the fourth and first quarters, because they're trying to anticipate that snowy season, right? Um, versus something else could be seasonally affected at a different time of the year. So there is those niche and micro influences on certain types of industries within the space as well. Got it. Um, War Dog uh, Services is the main goal for, res for residual, for sure. And this concept freaking works, man. Thank you for all your content. Hey, and I, I just love to hear that it is working for you. Um, as you know, War Dog, it, it just takes the work. But a lot of times it's just getting out of our own way and, and doing the thing. And I think you could probably attest to, yeah, we could try to do this perfectly or we could be worried about doing it 100%, you know, right. Um, or, or, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like with your proposals and all this, that would stop us from trying and learning and moving forward. Versus just moving forward and, you know, doing the damn thing. Um, that's where the learning and the shifts take place. So 100%. All right. So we have um, our cafeteria deep cleaning. So it's going to be similar to like, you know, janitorial small business set aside. So we do have a small business set aside. And guys, if you are liking this video, I meant to ask you smash the like button. It does help the algorithm. And if you are new and you're watching or you're just watching and you're not subscribed yet, consider subscribing to the channel so that you can ask more questions on future live streams. So definitely want to like and subscribe. Um, so GSA intends to issue a firm fixed price contract resulting for this solicitation for deep cleaning of the cafeteria space. There is a site visit scheduled November 17th, which that actually has already passed. So let's remind ourselves the due date is November 28th, which is in five days. So 
more of a learning example probably for this one. It's going to be in Sacramento, California, but not a whole lot of time as we are looking at this live to actually probably go after it since you've missed the site visit. In terms of documents, we do have a solicitation and an amendment. We'll look at the solicitation first. It is 55 pages. They are saying that the site visit is mandatory. So again, if you're working on your qualifying system, okay, essentially sorting the good bids from the bad ones, once you have bids coming in from your prospecting system, now you got to sort those bids that are coming in. Uh, you have to decipher between the ones you actually want to invest time in and going after and saying, you know what, there's better stuff to go after. I'm going to put this one aside. You know, so if you miss the site visit, for example, this would be something that should trigger your qualifying system in your business saying this is mandatory. So you were not in on that sign in list and the government's not going to have confidence in your bid because you did not actually walk and see the grounds for this. So you would just want to stop. You would want to kill this and you would want to move on and start investing time in something else that could be a good fit for you to go after. But just for learning experiences, we have this pulled up. We have our SF1449 form again. Giving us just one line item here. We'll see what else they have for pricing because that's kind of, you know, you know, it's it's deep cleaning. So this is going to be more of, I'm guessing this is going to be more of like a, a project-based thing with like, you're going to do it in a weekend or you're going to do it in a week or you're going to do it in a day. Okay. Probably not a huge job. Definitely probably not a long job long job so going into our statement of work here out of our clauses And then we have our wage termination. Do we have any, we don't have any other pricing claims. So I am curious, just uh, to take a quick look at this amendment, see what this is about. And, and if you don't know to formally acknowledge amendment, you actually do have to fill out this document. So print date and sign and fill out this box eight as well. They're saying the purpose of this amendment is to incorporate answers to questions. All right, so where are the questions and where are the answers? Unless this is just them like giving the, okay, here's the questions and answers. Okay, who is the current contractor? There is no contractor for the cafeteria. Okay, why? Because this is gonna be a one-off thing. This is not an ongoing service. You know, the story kind of makes sense. What is the currently monthly charge? Um, there is no monthly charge because it's not ongoing. Okay. This should be something like if you guys are watching this, you're being good students. It shouldn't take long to realize just from understanding. They're just doing asking for one deep cleaning. There wouldn't be an incurrent incumbent. There wouldn't be a monthly charge. So this contractor is making themselves look a little silly and it's fine. Um, but they should have been able to piece together that this was uh, not these worth asking these type of questions. Okay. What is the term of the current contract? Same thing. What is the square footage? That's a good question. 2,700. What are the consumables, chemicals, equipment, and supplies needed? Um, they're basically saying you will be responsible. Okay, you tell us what you need to clean. You don't get to ask the government saying, hey, what do we need to clean this stuff? The government's saying, hey, we need deep cleaning. You need to get it done. Okay, so if, I don't know if these questions are all from the same company, but this company looks like they have no idea what they're doing, to be honest. And if you guys are watching this now or if you're following uh, this channel, um, you guys would know to kind of like piece this story together first. And I, I wouldn't expect a lot of questions like this to come like from our community. But it's just interesting to see, to show you guys like this is sometimes your competition. You should be able to beat these companies. Um, imagine how they're doing their pricing. You know, we see a lot, even like on our bid team, um, contracts that are awarded for dangerously low amounts. And I tell our, our bid team members, my clients, don't be jealous of an award that was made too low. Like, don't be jealous of a company that's now taking bad business. Okay. You know, I've had bad contracts. You don't want them. Okay. Um, 
you don't want to take something that's not going to be profitable or something that you're going to lose money on. So if they misbid the contract, then good for them. It's a whole other battle and it's a huge frustration of mine that contracting doesn't do a better job at vetting these dangerously low pricing that can sometimes come in and allow these companies to come in and win, but, but you don't want it at that level. Okay. And they're going to be in a world of hurt. And honestly, they're probably not going to survive after one or two contracts of doing that. They're not going to be around long term. So we just need to stick to what we know is right as a company. We need to stick to our numbers and we need to stick to providing the government a good service. And, and, and again, it's just kind of apparent that these questions, like they didn't even read the solicitation. Is the contractor expected to remove the old oil from the deep fryers? Okay. I'll give them that one. The contractor is responsible for removing the old oil. And to be honest, these questions do not sound like questions from a prime contractor. They sound like questions that are from a, like a subcontractor or, you know, like a cleaning company or something like that. Probably not going to spend any more uh, time on this one. Um, it's pretty, it's pretty straightforward, but I think it's interestingly enough to, to see those Q and A's that we just went through. Word dog, definitely not easy, but so attainable. Just get rid of that limiting mindset. And I love that you said that it is in so few words, a limiting mindset only because so many haven't done this before or won before. But once that limiting mindset is unlocked, you stop holding yourself back. And that's that's really all that I can say. Uh, Yvonne, that's very encouraging. And stick to the numbers 100%. Yes, don't beat yourself up. If you bid on your first one, you bid on your second one, and you haven't won, and you're like, man, how are these being awarded for this price? It's okay. Um, and again, it is an, it's okay and it's not okay. It's okay that you're not taking bad business. We don't want that. Okay, There are other opportunities for you, I promise. What's not okay is that contract is not doing a better job at preventing these type of awards um, from being made. They should be looking at this and it's not being like greedy in terms of saving money and going solo. They should be saying, you know what, this is going to get messed up and this is going to cost taxpayers even more dollars because we're going to have to recompete this out and give it to a company who's doing it the right way. And these companies are giving small businesses a bad name because they don't know what they're doing. They're not reading the solicitations. They're not asking intelligent questions. They're not going to the site visits. Okay, they're kind of being lazy about it. Um, that's what's not okay. And if there were, if I ever had a, a platform or, or whatever, that would be probably my one string that I played on. The one, my one wish is that contracting would uh, do a more fair job, a, a more comprehensive job with that sort of thing. Blake says, always good to hear that quality over quantity, I suppose. Always, always, always Blake, quality over quantity, but we are finding that true balance of putting numbers on the board in terms of quantity but we're not trying to do like 50 bids, uh, you know, a year, you know, I had a conversation once, um, back in the day with a, a guy who said, Derek, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I'm bidding. I did 50 bids this year and he lost all of them. He didn't win a single bid. And again, this is more for procurement. So it's more like supplies and stuff driven. It wasn't as for services. So it's, it's a little bit different. Um, and the first question I had to mind is, well, how many debriefs, were you able to have? And I know you're not going to have a debrief for every single bid. Um, but out of 50, you should have had a handful at least with contracting to learn, to get feedback, what you're doing wrong, what you're doing right, what you need to improve on. And the answer was zero, zero debriefs. So what is the point of continuing to bid, 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 lose, lose, lose? Um, and maybe sometimes you, like, you know, like you, you're able to um, look at yourself in terms of feedback and give yourself a little feedback. Like, okay, I want to do this better next time. Cool. But this individual was just doing the same thing, not improving at all. So it is, it is quantity, but it's also quality in terms of like the bids we're going after and what we're selecting and shortlisting with our prospecting and our qualifying systems. But it's also that can, that commitment and not just like a theoretical commitment, but something that's actually implemented into your business to get better with each and every bid, whether it's 5% better, 10% better, 3% better, like whatever. So that not only are you putting numbers on the board, but you're getting better. And that's going to build up to affect your win ratios um, from the three to 12 month markers 
as you're putting numbers on the board. But you can't do that if you're not playing quantity, if you're not playing the numbers game. But that's why we have to strike a balance between the two. And um, that's why I spend time talking about that a lot. Keeping in security to monitor children. Um, oh, wait, I must have missed something here. The chat moved on me here. With hotel solicitations, one of your YouTube videos has stated you have someone to represent your business. Right. Um, do you have any suggestions as far as the the housekeeping and the security to monitor children? Um, it's not your job to monitor children unless it is your job. I haven't seen solicitations like this one, Yvonne, for hotel solicitations where they're asking you to monitor children, which means the government is going to be providing warm bodies who are going to be working the thing. You're just providing the shell. You're, you're providing the structure. You're providing the quote unquote playground, even though it's not really a playground, but um, the space for the, the magic to happen. Um, usually it is not your job to actually be involved and engaged with the actual uh, performance and management of the event itself. You just have to, again, create the space for that to happen unless they tell you otherwise. And if they tell you otherwise, then you're just going to have to, you know, build in bodies, which is going to be more pricing, which is going to be separate, you know, pricing line items, separate CLINs that you would, of course, be uh, building out for. But it's not typical. It's not something that we really see. And if you've and if you have seen that, um, then you'll want to follow that. But don't make it something that is not. Just, I guess, make it like what it is. Just take it for what it is. And if you do have clarification questions like, shall I include this in my pricing? Um, then feel free to you know submit that as an RFI and email to contracting. Okay, thank you so much. I was stressing so bad about that. Got it. Um, so thank you so much for the clarity. Yeah, 100%. Again, unless otherwise stated, we don't want to assume that we have to do things. And again, I'm just telling you from my experience that uh, it's very unlikely. Okay, but go through, check the statement of work again. Just make sure that's not in there. Um, typically, it's going to be, again, for rooms, audio, video equipment, uh, food. These are the three primary scopes that can come into these hotel jobs. So, um, Can you do uh, debriefs for product bids? It's less likely that contracting will give it to you because these typically are proposal debriefs. And there's not really, Blake, um, there's not really a proposal necessarily associated with a a, a product or a procurement type bid. So contracting could just say like, no, like this, there's no reason to, because uh, this, this was your price and this is the price that won. And there's really nothing to talk about. I'm still a proponent of asking with every single, you know, bid that uh, I submit, even if I win or lose, like just everything, you know, I, I want to know every single time I want to ask the question because contracting may just tell me one thing. If I can just walk away with one thing that's beneficial then it was worth my while. And since I'm not big on like marketing at this stage to like, you know, Oz to booze, because I know we had that question earlier today as well, um, or, or conferences or these other methods of direct marketing, I am a huge fan of indirect marketing where, you know, all of our marketing efforts are tied to bidding. Okay. So not only are we bidding through bidding, but we're also marketing through bidding. And that's another reason to do a proposal debrief because then you either get on a zoom you get on the phone um, with contracting and you, you get more face time. They get to know who you are. It's just another kind of indirect passive way of, of if nothing else showing that you're showing up, you're jumping through the hoops because then if you, if you scale this out over a year long strategy and you're, you're targeting certain areas and you're doing this again and again and again, what do you think is going to happen? You are going to win. That contracting office is going to award you um, as long as, you know, all your boxes are checked. Of course, they are not just going to like give you something if you don't deserve it. But in terms of marketing, it very much works like a snowball if you're doing it in a targeted way and you're doing these sort of indirect marketing activities again and again, like I said, at the same places. That's what I believe in, in marketing at this stage for new federal contractors versus you know going to you know like i said events um spamming out our capability statement um trying to do uh osdebu meetings you know these things are all things that you can do it's just not what i recommend at this stage so 
Yep, 100%. Great questions, guys. And we have our final bid here. And this is going to be for lodging. So go figure. Uh, Kentucky, second quarter lodging. So it's going to be the start of next year, small business set aside. This is going to be lowest price, technically acceptable. We only have one attachment. I'm just going to dive into it. Um, they are giving us pricing cleanse here, so I will pause. They're saying Wednesday, uh, Jan 18, Jan 19, Jan 20, Jan 21. And then 10 Wednesday, 15 Thursday. Yeah, no, so it's going to be like 10. I don't know. The, the way they're writing this, it's a little sloppy. So I, I'm, I am just going to skip that and go straight to the the document because I'm, I'm mixing up the dates and the number of rooms. So let's just see what they give us here. We have a statement of work. They're giving us the same thing, 10 Wednesday, 15 Thursday, 40 to 50 Friday, and 80 to 90 on Saturday. So that's going to just have to be the rooms. Um, and then the dates are Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and these are the dates. Okay, so 10 rooms, 15 rooms, 40 to 50 rooms, and 80 to 90 rooms. Okay, we made it through that a little bit uh, sloppy, but we made it. And that's clue number one. Clue number two, Friday, February 4th now. 40 to 50 rooms for Friday, 80 to 90 on Saturday. And then Friday, uh, 24 March and 25 March and 26 March and 29 March, they want 40 to 50 rooms on Friday, 80, 90 rooms on Saturday, 50 rooms on each night for the other days. All right. I feel like they could have did a better job at like making that understandable, but it's fine. They're giving us a statement of work. Um, lodging room standards, what needs to be like what whatever ho uh, whatever hotel, excuse me, um, the requirements that they have to meet. The deadline for providing the list of names for room reservations to the hotel will be no later than four business days prior to the UTA. I'm just kind of scanning this looking for food. It says at least one commercial dining facility serving three meals a day within a convenient safe walking distance of the quarters is required, but they're not having you like serve the meals. Okay. So they're just, you have to have a restaurant that serves three meals a day and you can say, go there. Okay. That's all that they're asking for. Must have self park services. They are giving you the cores, contracting officer representative, Aaron uh, Footy and Kevin Wood, uh, Woodard. So these are the POCs actually once the event kicks off. You wouldn't really need that right now, but they're giving that to you as well. They haven't given us any pricing structure, so we will just kind of quickly refer. We're going to have to refer to when you guys listen up. When, when this happens, when you don't have, like what's the rule of forms? Number one, we don't go looking for them. We fill out the forms that are given to us. But then if you don't have information like in a, in a solicitation or in a form, but it's copy and pasted within the listing body of the same listing page, and that's all we have, then, then that's all we have. And we still abide by that because it is still like it's still binding. It still counts. So they gave us these cleans here and they did put that in the statement of work, but like that's it. So this is how your pricing is going to be reflected. Like, and this is primarily what they're asking for in this. They already said it's going to be lowest price. It would be good to like represent to them, um, like if you have a map or something, because the other thing they asked for was for that restaurant to be able to show, hey, we have a restaurant, it's close. They serve three meals a day so that you can check that box as well to let them know that you are technically acceptable. All right, cool, guys. There is so much more guys to learn about bidding and winning on Sam than what we do during these lives. This is really just a drop in the ocean. If you are looking for a step-by-step -step proven process to follow with weekly coaching um, to make sure that you're doing this right, you may be the next perfect fit to join our bid team. Um, you can learn more and apply to booking uh, a call to talk more about it at govkidmethod.com if that's something that you are interested in. Um, 
again, guys. Hey, we got Abby on from the bid team as well. Good to see you, Abby. Um, if you guys like this video, again, smash the like button. And if you're new or if you haven't yet, consider subscribing. Subscribe to the channel. And um, this is Thanksgiving week. It, it came so quickly. I can't believe it. All week I was thinking it was um, up until yesterday. I was thinking it was next week. Um, just been so busy and then a little foggy dealing with this this head cold that I have. But um, happy Thanksgiving to everybody who's going to be celebrating it. Um, and I hope you guys get to spend time with your families and your loved ones. And uh, yeah, just wishing you guys all the best. And thanks for hanging out today. And we will see you all uh, likely. Um, probably won't be this week. Probably won't do one on Friday. But it will definitely be next week if, if no sooner with our next live and uh, great questions. Hopefully we're able to um, get some stuff taken for care of for you guys. Uh, and another shout out to War Dog on his second win. Let's go. Um, we'll see you all in the next one. Take care, everybody.